What is up heroes, this is Midnight Zero, and welcome back to Zero Thought. In this episode, we're going to be talking about choosing battles. So I'm going to start off this episode by telling a little bit of a story. Uh, growing up, I always, well not always, but when I got into high school, I kind of realized I was relatively smart, and I started to become a bit of a know-it-all. Uh, always asserting that I was right about a lot of things, because I, oftentimes I did know a lot of things, and more than other people did. Uh, so a lot of times I was right, so when we got in an argument, it was more likely that I was right a lot of the time. And when talking to people about things that I knew about, uh, I would get very upset and a lot of times correct people if they were wrong about something that I was very informed about. However, as I grew up, uh, more of these arguments happened, it had positive and negative effects. I mean, from a positive side, I was established as actually knowing a lot of things and that I could win a lot of arguments, I was good at arguing and such. Uh, on the bad side though, a lot of people didn't like talking to me sometimes. Uh, they just completely avoid me on certain topics because they didn't even want to potentially get into an argument because if they said anything wrong I'd correct them and then they'd get upset about me constantly correcting them and it just wouldn't work out well. So growing up I've had to deal with choosing my battles. and. By that I mean deciding which arguments are really worth having. This is a very crucial skill to making friendships, maintaining friendships, um, especially in having like a significant other relationship. And it's something I've had to work on throughout my whole life because it was one of my biggest character flaws uh, growing up. And it's still not perfect. Like I'm still far from perfect, but it's something I've improved a whole lot on. Now. How I like to choose my battles is I say, first of all, do I know a lot about this topic? Am I actually really informed about this topic to the point where it's almost guaranteed that I'm correct? So we're say, we say something like Super Smash Bros. Melee. I know a lot about that game. And so I think, hey, I actually know quite a bit about this. It's likely that I'll be right. Especially if it's something like Marth Technical Skill. That is like right up my category. Uh, that's what I know. If it were, you know, like Peach Tech, I'd be like, eh, you know, I might know more than your average person, but that's not really my area of specialty. So first of all, you have to determine how much you know about the topic. Something else that needs a lot of consideration is how much the person you're potentially arguing with knows about that topic. So if I'm talking to someone who has absolutely no idea uh, about Melee or Competitive Smash, I'm gonna have to consider, well, what am I gonna have to teach them to make my point? So if they say uh, something about input delay and L canceling, I'm going to know a lot about the topic, but they're going to know absolutely nothing. And so if they say something incorrectly about it, if I'm going to correct them, I'm going to have to explain to them about the difference between CRTs and LCD TVs or HD TVs, the input delay involved, why it's important, and the fact that like the game runs at 60 FPS, and the frames involved in animations of characters, and how L canceling shortens them, and why it's competitively useful and such, and then I'm gonna have to get this other person to understand that, and then correct them on that. So that's a lot of work for one small correction. Whereas if I just completely avoid it all, I can say, hey, you know, that's not 100% accurate, it's pretty close, but you have the right general concept. Boom, battle avoided, and we can move on with the, con we can move on with the conversation. The other person is aware that they're not 100% correct, and that you are, and you're probably more knowledgeable, you've kind of shown that you know more about the topic and gained some credibility, and you guys didn't get in a fight, so there's no tension between you two. Now, you also have to think about the frequency of these corrections, because if you correct people all the time and a lot, it's going to get really annoying really fast, and it's going to speed up the pace at which you get to these negative consequences of incorrectly choosing battles. So that's one other thing to consider. And then, strangely enough, you have to consider the power dynamic between the people involved. So, yes, I might know a ton about Smash, but if I'm arguing with someone who's 20 years older than me about Smash, it's going to be different because their age does give them a sense of authority over me, and society does enforce the structure of younger people should listen to older people. And so the argument, even if you assert that you're right and give all the evidence, in the end, the outcome is probably going to be determined by, well, I'm the adult, well, I'm the older person, well, I'm your parent, so you're going to end up doing this. 
and then the argument just leads to more tension. Whereas you could have just, you know, bite the bitten the bullet and said, you know what, I'm probably right, but I'm going to go through with this decision anyways, so that I can show them that they're wrong, without getting going through all this tension. And I remember one time I was talking to my mom's friend who has a dog who's gotten relatively old, and this dog is a Labrador, which is a breed that sheds, and shedding occurs year-round. Dogs are always losing their hair because it has a whole bunch of different purposes as far as like keeping out insects, um, waterproofing, and th temperature regulation. It helps keep them a little warm in the uh, winter, and it helps deflect some of the sun's heat, uh, deflect some light in the summer. So it goes both ways. But I was um, talking to this adult, and she said, oh, he's getting so old, you can already tell he's losing his hair. To which I responded, oh, isn't that just him shedding? And the adult said, oh, no, no, it's the summer. They only do that during the winter to stay warm. And I knew in the back of my head, well, they actually shed year-round, and you'd think that this person would know that having lived with this dog for over 10 years. But that would severely embarrass her, and it really doesn't give me any benefit having her know that her dog actually sheds all year round. And I wasn't going to burst her bubble. And I was like, oh, okay. And just moved on. It's not that big of a deal. So I chose not to have that battle. Now, if there is a topic or an issue that's incredibly important to you that you need to stand up for, uh, bullying or something like that, and I mean, that's a bit more of an extreme example of something that almost anyone would universally want to stand up to, but then that is a battle you almost always want to choose. So, I encourage you guys, at the end of this episode, to think about which types of battles you would want to fight for, and which you would rather just not have. Who are the people that you think you already choose a lot of battles um, with, and if you think you can improve the frequency, help tone down how many battles you're having with that person to help maintain that friendship. And I wish you guys best of luck with that. But until the next episode, this has been Midnight Zero, and this mission is complete.